Yesterday in our uh, XYZ, um, no, not our XYZ, I'm sorry, the big I, we had a lot of letters going on in this show. We looked at creating oil from algae. Now, today's big I branches off from that. I'm going to come back to the algae thing in a minute. Just stay with me. We're talking about plastics right now. The vast majority of today's plastics are made from uh, petroleum, oil, uh, raising issues of resources and cost because plastic... When oil goes up, plastic goods cost more. A company called Seraplast produces bioplastics. Uh, it's a hybrid resin that replaces 50% or more of the petroleum that goes into plastic with renewable sources, and then they become 100% compostable and biodegradable. Basically, let me show you how it works. Uh, I'm just looking at this and, and, and trying to give you some sense of it. Uh, to make the plastic, you, you have a few things. you got um, starch. Uh, from stuff like corn and tapioca and potatoes, things like that. That's that's a biomaterial, uh, and they mix it up with other biomaterials, uh, and then they mix it with something called PLA. PLA. Uh, it's basically a natural acid that comes from uh, sugarcane or corn, and they put it all together, and it becomes this. These grains you see here. This becomes the product that then into the plastic uh, to make a more biodegradable plastic uh, that then gets made into all the things you think you use plastic for. Now, Seroplast sells the material to all kinds of companies who manufacture it into the kinds of products that we use today. Let me just give you uh, a bit of an example as to what we're uh, talking about here. This is the, this is the, the product that gets made, um, and it goes into all sorts of other things. You can see straws here. You can see uh, injection molding. You can, you can see uh, bumpers for cars. You can see uh, cups and things like that. So, you know, common products. Uh, it says that its resins are much cheaper to produce and more durable than the brittle bioplastics that we've seen in the past, the kind of plastic that's made uh, from, from biodegradable goods. Now, I told you in the beginning that I was going to tell you about uh, algae and how this comes into it. Yesterday we talked about making algae into oil. Basically, uh, Seroplast is banking on the idea that they can use algae to do some of this. Frederick Scher is the CEO of Seroplast. Uh, he's here to explain a little bit more about this. Hi, Frederick. Welcome to the show. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Tell us a little bit about this. I tried to give it a setup. I'm sure I, I botched some of it, but uh, did I basically give the right idea? And what are you going to do uh, with algae? Yeah, you absolutely give the right idea. I mean, plastic is in uh, everyday life, and clearly plastic is something which is very important for us. We cannot live with plastic. But plastic, as you say, has a couple of uh, challenges, which are number one, it's made from one single uh, feedstock, which is fossil fuels. Yeah. And bioplastics are, it's what we are doing. And what we want to do is avoid that problem and try to make product from different kind of feedstocks. And therefore, it is the reason why we we're working with agricultural resources, but we're also looking at alternative feedstocks such as the algae. And this is how, in fact, we came to the algae because we believe that algae could be a viable feedstock and could help us make sure that we will be creating products that are going to be affordable. All right. So when we people just think of algae as something that is in the water. Uh, we, we learned uh, earlier this week about algae that's used to, to make oil, but it's algae that's farmed, basically. Is this what you're talking about, sort of creating algae to, to do this? <laughs> But, uh, you're absolutely correct. Um, but basically, if you look at all the companies that are interested in extracting the oil to make uh, to make algae, they they end up with one big problem. They create a mountain of of biomass of products that they don't know what to do with it. It's a byproduct, and this is exactly what we are interested in. Uh, we basically take from those people and from those companies. We take, in fact, all the biomass, all the waste which that they are creating, and we are transforming it into a feedstock. For, for our bioplastics. In doing this, it allows us, in fact, to have access to materials that will be low cost. We're helping those companies. And if, you, if we take a little bit of perspective, if we try to remember what happened about 100 and 150 years ago, it's exactly what happened when we discover, uh, when we discover petroleum. Uh, you had a couple of companies that basically drill the oil, yep. get the oil out, and starting to use it as a fuel. But then they were ending up with a lot of byproducts, and those byproducts become the plastic of today, the chemical of today. Ah. And, uh, and, and it's, you know, 150 years ago, well, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're just looking at something in a pattern which is basically more or less the same. Okay, so you're and taking the important. byproduct of algae, which can be used to make oil. You're taking the byproduct of that and making it into what we think of as a byproduct of oil. You're making it into plastics. Are your plastics cheaper or more expensive than plastics that are made out of traditional petroleum? 
Well, that's, this is a key question. As of today, the hybrid resins that we are offering is basically about 5% more expensive however, in terms of the resin itself. However, when uh, the plastic fabricators are manufacturing the product, they run their machine, traditional equipment, temperature which are about 50% lower than, than normally when they run, uh, when they run um, a fossil fuels based resin. The result is our resins are basically at the same price as of today. Uh, than, than, tradi than traditional resin. And I believe that this is a key thing. You have to understand something which I, in my mind is, is key. I, I, I listened to your show earlier. You were talking about carbon dioxide. When we create one pound of polypropylene, which is a polyolefin, yeah. we are creating at the same time 3.14 kilos of carbon dioxide. Yeah. When we do create a one pound uh, or one kilo of our, uh, what I call biopropylene, yeah. we are basically creating only 1.70 kilo of carbon dioxide. So basically, we're reducing that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm anticipate, uh, anticipating with, that with the algae, we'll be even doing better than that. All right. Good to talk to you. This is great. Great big idea. We hope uh, that works out for you. We'll continue to follow this. And one of these days, I'll bring my uh, lunch to work in a container that's made out of uh, bioresins. Good to talk to you, Mr. Scher. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much. All right, listen, we're going to have a discussion when we come back about... Uh